Hey guys, this is Coach Becca here and welcome to my 15 minute recovery session for triathletes. You'll need a tennis ball or softball or lacrosse ball, a short step or a ledge and a mat for today and also some water if you'd like to have that. So this is the step ball that I'll be using. Um, you could use a wall. I'll give you some different options uh, when we get to some of those specific things there. I'm gonna take my shoes off, just finished a nice little recovery run, uh, but this session is best done barefoot. So go ahead and take your ball and we're just gonna start by rolling the feet out, the bottoms of the feet for 15 to 20 seconds uh, per side, just to kind of loose up Loosen up some of the junk there. The, your feet have muscles, just like if you clench and relax your hands, your feet are kind of similar. Um, so we just kind of want to release some of that tension there. Um, and we're going to begin working our way through each joint um, on the body and just rejuvenating each joint. Um, whether you're just finishing a race or a really hard training cycle or just need some recovery, uh, today's workout is for you. So let's start working our way towards feeling better. Okay, so go ahead and place your forefoot on the ball. And all you're gonna do now is curl your toes slowly around the ball, like you're trying to grab the ball with your feet and then lift them up towards the sky. So you're basically flexing and extending your toes. And I'm just doing five rounds of that per foot, just wrapping my foot around the ball, squeezing it tightly, and then lifting back up in the opposite direction. So flexion and extension of the toes. Um, really important if you are a runner or perhaps you hike. I'm gonna switch sides here. Perhaps you walk recreationally if you're not a runner or triathlete. This is just a great barefoot mechanic uh, drill as we build resilience in the feet, um, ankles working our way up to the rest of the body. So we're starting at the very foundation today to invigorate and uh, build resilience in the body. So after rolling, the flex and extend. This is a great practice to do after log runs too. I do recommend doing this regularly in your training cycle. All right, very good. I'm gonna give that ball a quick wipe off now and we're gonna move on to shoulder cars with the ball. So just go ahead and grab the ball, stand comfortably. I'm gonna place one hand on the shoulder I'm working. Lift the ball up overhead, rotating back at the front. Okay, here's what it looks like. Slowly begin to come back the way that you came. Again, rotating at the top. Okay, so we're just gonna lift, we're gonna rotate, and we're gonna reach back. Keeping that ball as close as you can to your center line. And CAR stands for controlled articular rotation. So we wanna control our movement, control that rotation through the shoulder joint, improving our mobility, improving our control of that shoulder joint. Because like the hip, it's a ball and socket joint. So if you are a swimmer, um, or even a sport that just involves a lot of shoulder rotation. This is a really great drill for you to do to improve your, your um, mobility and your range of motion and then also your control of that range of motion and power. So really important foundational exercise for you guys. I recommend doing these every day if you can. I could say that about everything though in this, in this session. Obviously recovery is a huge piece of what you do as an athlete. So it's really important to prioritize it. All right, moving to the other side. Again, we start by lifting and we rotate back as far as we can. Once you touch the, the back of the leg there, rotate back. I like to time this with my breath. Inhale up, exhale back, inhale up at that rotation, exhale down. Deep breaths, controlled movement. It's nice to envision how this will translate to your swim stroke. Um, so maybe if you struggle with the swim, particularly I'm somebody that always kind of has to work through the swim, right? So this is a good time to practice mental visualization as well. One more shoulder car. If you've been doing these regularly, that's why I've added the ball in. If you're brand new to this, you could of course have done all of these without the ball. Probably should have mentioned that, but it's a good way to progress your mobility drills just to add something in light like a tennis ball. All right, we're gonna have 90 degree angle at the shoulder and the elbow. I just pointed to that there. I'm gonna rotate down and back as much as I can. Okay, so here we go for five. We're gonna rotate that ball down while keeping the elbow in line with the shoulder and then rotate back. So again, just another way to practice rotation. Um, maybe as you translate that directly to your freestyle catch and pull, right? Maybe maintaining that high elbow, catching lots of water. Again, just try to make a way, trying to find a way to visualize making this sport specific. Pretty wordy way of saying that, but 90 degree turn back, 90 degree turn down. We're just gonna do five aside. Again, visualizing how this will translate to your swim stroke. Okay, we'll set it up 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. Okay, 
just kind of getting a feel for that shoulder joint. Rotate down, rotate back. Just kind of finding where there's sore spots there in the joint. Maybe you've been doing a big swim block. Maybe you just got done with an Ironman. Um, perhaps you're a mom that just had kids and you've been carrying your kids on one side and you notice more soreness on one side versus another. Um, building awareness is one of the most important things you can do um, as an athlete. So just kind of touch base with your shoulder joint here and say, how's this side doing versus the other? Is there pain? Is there catching? Is there clicking? Um, does it feel good, right? All right, so we're done with the ball for now. Uh, we're going to move over to using our step. So um, I'm going to use this in a couple different ways today. Um, the first one is going to be as standing. So even if you have a low step at your house um, or you have the edge of a treadmill, you could use that here. Okay, so we're just going to do an elevated calf stretch. I'm just going to let the back leg hang off the edge of the step uh, in dorsiflexion, just giving that calf and Achilles a good stretch here for about 15 to 20 seconds. So if you don't have this particular step or setup at your house, you can use the bottom of... Um, a staircase, uh, a chair that's stable, um, a step stool, totally fine. Okay, so we'll switch sides here. If you're outside, just take in your surroundings, take some deep breaths here. Maybe you've had some frustrations in the last block. Maybe you've done really well in the last block, whether you're on an emotional high or an emotional low right now. Um, sometimes these longer flexibility holds can help you touch base with your breathing and where your mind's at. All right, big toe lifts. This one's a little tricky. So here we're gonna place one toe, one foot up on a, a step. The other foot is gonna go flat down. Okay, so a chair is okay here, but a step is more ideal. And all we're gonna do is roll from our heel to our forefoot. So here you'll see it again, heel to forefoot, and then use your big toe and lift up. So we're kind of practicing uh, big toe strength, right? Important for runners or people that walk or hike. Um, I've got bunions or hammer toes, so I have a foot that's growing the wrong direction essentially. So I'm working on my arch quite a bit. So I have pain-free running and fast running as a forefoot strike runner, okay? Whether or not you strike with the forefoot or the heel, it's important to build your big toe strength and that's what these do. You might feel this a little bit in the arch. That's also kind of helping build arch strength and integrity as well. Just take it step by step here, okay? We'll do this on the other side now. We'll do six, roll from the heel to the forefoot and then use that big toe to lift the rest of your whatever body weight you have centered on that leg up to the tiptoe. And just by having the feet staggered and the other foot elevated, that's gonna help take just a little bit of the body weight off that big toe, because these are relatively challenging. Doesn't seem like it. it. Seems like you're just doing a really slow calf raise. And essentially you are, but you're working on your big toe joint and building strength there. Think about how much weight you push off that toe when you run or sprint or, or climb an uneven surface or walk. It's important, and when we have shoes on, we don't necessarily always think about that but it's happening whether or not we're thinking about it or not. So this is why we're paying attention to the bottom, the very core mechanics today. All right, so this next one, if you don't have, I'm just gonna use my step as a wall, but this works really great along a wall too. So you can just move your setup over to a wall. If you have to hit pause for that, you can. So we're gonna be kneeling. You'll, my front foot's the one I'm stretching, okay? And we're just gonna find a spot. Start at the wall and then slowly move your foot back until you find the stretch. You have to keep your heel on the ground, so check that out, okay? Once you find the spot where you can lean forward with your heel on the ground and touch the wall, that's where I gave that thumbs up, okay? Checking that heels on the floor. That's where we're gonna hold the stretch. So this is just an ankle mobility, Achilles, um, kind of strengthening, resilience type of exercise. We're just gonna hold once we find that sweet spot and switch sides. So again, you'll see me kind of get set up here where I start with my foot forward. Okay, I can touch my knee to the wall pretty easily. So I'll slide back a little bit. Boom, I can touch the wall and it's challenging. My heel is down. I'm gonna go with this, okay? So you should be able to just feel that Achilles tendon, the back of the heel, the calf, all getting a nice stretch and, and, and mobility going there. And we're just holding and breathing here giving some love to the Achilles. A lot of times after a hard run race, I just had a really um, challenging 70.3, that half marathon kind of took a bit out of me so I can really feel the Achilles and so I've been giving it lots of love this week. All right, next up is the knee joint. So we're gonna do some knee flexions. Okay, with your feet flat, you're gonna lean back and touch behind you. Okay, we're gonna show you a few different ways to do this. Lean back, touch behind you. Start relatively gentle. 
spleen. So this way, what we're doing is practicing knee flexion, stretching out the quads, stretching out the hips. Also with that rotation, we're stretching out the spine a little bit. So there's a lot going on here. If you're really sore and you can't reach back that far, boom, just reach towards the ankle, just like so. You can make this a really big reach, like so, or a really small reach, like what I was just demonstrating, based on how your body feels. So just rotational lean backs, which is, again, it's knee flexion. So we're working on the knee joint. We're stretching out the hips just in this big stretch back. You might feel your core stretching out, your spine and torso stretching out. It's a great exercise. So try to really maximize this piece, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable at first. Great job. Moving even deeper now into the spine, we're gonna do some cat and cow before doing some hip cars. Inhale and lift that tailbone up. Imagine yourself filling your pelvis up with water, and then as you exhale and lower the lower back, you're gonna dump all the water out the front of your pelvis. So just big mobilizations of the spine. We're gonna flex and extend the spine in hopes of just bringing some life and mobility into our spine, kind of letting the hips and the chin follow the spine movement, lifting and lowering, maximizing the spinal flexion extension, keeping the arms quiet, deep breathing. Really nice, you guys. We're gonna move right into a hip car, so don't go anywhere. Drive the knee forward, rotate the foot outward, and lift the knee back and around as if you're going over a hurdle. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, we're gonna go back the way we came. We're gonna extend at the hip, rotate the foot outward, pull the foot through, and reset to the start position. Let's do two more. Drive the knee in, rotate the foot, knee, and hip outwards, extending and lowering down, that's step one. Step two, we push back, we rotate again, and pull that knee and foot through. One more for good measure. Drive the knee, rotate outwards, extend, and step one is done. Push back, extend, rotate, pull around with a strong core, and reset, very good. So mobilizing the hip joint, again, CAR stands for controlled articular rotation. So we're doing all the movements of the hip, flex, rotate, pull in, pull out. So again, we're driving adduction, abduction, all those good things. Your hip can do a lot, right? It's a ball and socket joint like your shoulder. So you we just wanna find the spaces in that hip joint, pushing back, rotating outwards, pulling down, around, and through. Again, driving the knee in, rotating outwards, pulling back. If you cycle a lot, right? If you're in aero position on a TT bike or even on a road bike or even just sitting in your office chair every day, right? The hips get tight, the glutes get weak and you know not use, utilized enough. You're gonna hear those things a lot. So let's, let's work some rotation in through that hip joint. Bring that hip alive so that the glutes and the core and the quads and the hamstrings can all function like they were designed to. All right, this is a great exercise to kind of breathe some life into the lower body that's not too challenging. Um, it's a great exercise. We're just gonna place our heels up on the step, point our toes up towards the ceiling, and we're gonna do 12 glute bridges. So we're gonna exhale as we drive the hips up, get the glutes fired up, get the core going, just bring some energy into the workout. The first 10 to 12 reps, we're gonna do simple like so. <laughs> Move my little sidekick out of the way here. And then the back half, the, the second 10, I'll show you how to add rotation to that to get the spine mobilized as well. So we're coming to the close here of our just regular feet elevated bridges. Just a reminder to keep the toes up, keeping the feet flexed here, strengthen up the front of the shins a little bit. I like to do that here. And what we're gonna begin to do after this one is just reach one arm across the body, roll onto the opposite shoulder as we drive the hips. And we're gonna do 10 of those. So reach and roll over, drive the hips, roll onto the opposite shoulder. So just adding in more rotation. If you're hearing me say the word rotate a lot, it's because it's the primary job of almost every joint, right? The ability to move, flex, extend, rotate through the joint. And when we can't do those things, we run into trouble. So that's why this recovery session is so focused on joint mobility and range of motion and resilience so that you're back on your feet doing all the things you love to do at a high pace or high power output as best as your body physically can. 
So go ahead and come into a forward bend here. We're going to wrap this up. Guys, thanks for joining me today. I've been taking the whole week really easy after a, a big race last weekend. Um, and we're heading into a new training block for me personally. So I hope to take you along that journey with me with more uh, short, sweet summer series videos. Um, hopefully you're staying strong and healthy out there and conquering all the goals you've set for yourself this year. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. So let's just bring it up slowly out of that forward bend. Make sure you're staying hydrated, keeping your bodies filled with healthy foods and getting plenty of sunshine. Thanks for joining me so much, guys. See you again soon. Again, next week I'll post a new video. So subscribe to stay up to date on all my new sessions. Have a great day.